Okay, we made good progress with the message resource with some of the APIs that we've covered so far. We're gonna switch focus to the profile resource. We're gonna create a new resource for profile. And if you remember the APIs that we talked about for a profile are uh, the resource URL for profile being slash profiles slash the profile ID and the collection URI being slash profiles. The resource for profile, the profile resource that we're gonna create in this tutorial, it has a lot of common stuff uh, when compared to what we've seen with messages, right? So they share a lot of the common things. There are a few nuances that I wanna highlight and that's the reason why I wanna cover this in this tutorial. But uh, let's cover that and then in the next section, we're gonna move on to some advanced topics. So I'm gonna create a new service called uh, profile service. which kind of contains a lot of the same things that the messenger service has, right? There are just a few small tweaks. The one tweak that I need to make, one change that I need to make here is, in the case of the message map, if you look at the database class.java, for the message map, it makes sense for the key of the map to be long, to be the ID. But in the case of profiles, I don't know if that's true anymore because for the pro for a profile, you need to look up based on the profile name, not by the ID, because that's how our APIs are designed, right? So you have profiles slash profile name, not the ID. So that's the first thing that's different among these two. So instead of having a long here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna convert this to a string. So I'm gonna set the profile name as the key and the profile instance itself as the value. Let me update this as well so that this works fine. So the mess, the profile service is gonna be very similar to the message service except for this minor fact that the key is actually a string. So this is how the profile service is gonna look like. So we have a map of string and profile which is what I get from the get profiles, which is basically the static instance so that every profile service instance accesses the same map. Now I have the get profiles method. So the, the list of methods do match, right? So there is a get all profiles, which returns a list of profiles. There's a get profile, which takes in the profile name, not the ID here, it takes in the profile name and it does a profiles.get off the profile name. It's again, looking up a map. There is an add profile method, which takes in the whole profile instance. Again, it does the set of ID because an ID is still needed. Uh, well, it's not really needed in this case, but you would need an ID in a database. So I'm kind of following that. I'm setting the ID here to be one plus the actual size. So every time the ID increments, but then when I put this instance to the map, I'm not putting the ID as the key, I'm putting the profile name as the key, and then I'm passing in the profile instance. Of course, I return the profile here. Update profile does the same thing. It's uh, taking in the profile instance. Well, here, this has to change, I'm sorry. So this has to be profile.get profile name. If the profile name is empty, you return null. If not, you just put that profile name as a key and then set the profile instance as a value and then return that profile. Remove profile takes in the profile name again. So everywhere there is an ID in messages, message service, there is a profile name in the profile service. And uh, once it takes the profile name, it does profile start remove of the profile name. So very, very similar to the message service, except for the fact that you have ID for all these lookups in the message service and you have profile names as lookup over here. I'm also gonna do a constructor over here because we need something to get us started off. Uh, I just have the simple constructor, which just puts to the profile map, the key being my name, Kaushik, and it creates a new profile with the ID one, my profile name, which is Kaushik, and my first name and last name. So this is the convenience constructor that we have for profiles. So I'm just initializing this so that there is one profile in the map for us to start off with. Okay, so this is the profile service, nice and simple. Now we're gonna create a resource. So I'm gonna create a new class, 
profile resource in messenger.resources, finish. And uh, I'm gonna create a new instance of profile service. And now let's map stuff. So we need the at path annotation, which is mapping to slash profiles. And uh, I'm gonna set the, the other stuff to be the same, consumes and produces, because it's always gonna be JSON for this handler. Now let's look at each of these methods, right? So there is a get messages, which is a get for slash messages, which returns all messages. So there needs to be an equivalent for profiles. Let me close these other guys. Okay, so there's gonna be add get, and the method is basically pretty much the same. We have a list of profiles being returned from the profile service, and I'm getting calling a method called get profiles, and this is mapped to slash profiles. Okay, first method is done. Let's look at the next one. This is a post on slash messages again, adds a message which takes in a profile and uh, it calls the add message of the service and then returns whatever it returns back. So similarly, there's gonna be add post and a very similar add profile method which takes in the profile which is in the post body sends to the profile service to add profile and then returns the response, right? Very similar. Let's look at the next one. Put for message ID. So let's, let's go in this order, the way we covered it, right? So next is get. Get for message ID does a get message with the path param being the message ID and it's the ID which is sent to the servers. Similarly, we need to have a profile name as the path param. It's not profile ID here. It's not an equivalent of message ID, right? So we have the profile name over here and that's what needs to be mapped. So let's do a get and um, the path is gonna be slash profile name in curly braces because that's what we need to map. The method itself is fairly straightforward. We have the get profile. Let me import path param. We have the get profile, which takes in the path param, which is the profile name that we already declared, and it accepts it as a string. Remember, a profile name is a string. We don't have conversion in this case. And I'm just passing that string to profile service dot get profile. Okay, on to the next one. We have uh, put. So a put basically does the update, right? An update message, again, takes in the message ID and the message sets the value and then updates it, right? Sets the ID if it doesn't already have it. Even if it has it, it just sets the ID because you wanna make sure that the ID is from the path param. And it sends that instance to update message. You need something similar, but in this case, you're doing profile name. So I'm gonna do add put, and then the path is the same. And now let's write the method. And the method is again very similar. Only thing is in this case, the path param is the profile name. I'm accepting that string. And what I set in the profile instance is the profile name, not the ID, right? The profile name is what's set. Uh, I would still expect the user to send the ID in this case. You can generate IDs or figure out IDs, it shouldn't matter. But uh, basically it sets the profile name here and it updates the profile. It sends that instance to the service. Very simple so far. Let's look at the next one. Delete. Delete takes in the message ID and then it sends that ID to remove message, right? It's an ID in this case. This will be the profile name in this case. Not too different. Now the path is still the same. This is the profile name. 
the method is very straightforward. We have delete profile, which takes in the profile name as the path param, gets that as an argument, and sends that to remove profile to remove the profile instance from the map. And I uh, guess that's it. Let's run this and see how it works. Okay, so this is the URL, the profile URL, messenger slash web API slash profiles. I've set the content type header. I'm just gonna do a get request to the collection URL. It should return the one profile that I have, right? It's in the list. So you can see the brackets, square brackets over here. Uh, if I wanna return that profile alone, I just do profile name here and I do a get for that. I just get that one without an array, right? It's just one instance of the profile. And I could, of course, post to this. I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna post to slash profiles raw, paste this here, remove the ID, we don't want this. And I'm gonna call this admin user and the profile name is admin. Hit send. Now it's, now it's created a new instance of profile with the ID two. Let me add one more. I'm gonna call this admin two, user two, and profile name is admin two. Hit send, and it's created this. Now let's do the get on profiles again. It should return all three, and it does. Let's delete one, or right, well, let's update one first. I'm gonna pick uh, admin2 as the record that I wanna update. I'm gonna go to admin2, well, get should return that record. Now I'll update this. Now I'm gonna change this to a put. I get the request body over here, and I'm gonna remove the profile name because I want that to be inferred from the URL. Let the ID be here. I'm going to change this to a new value and hit send. It's updated this. Now if I do a get on admin2, it should return this updated value. Now let's delete this. I click on delete as the method. Nothing required in the request body, and I hit submit, and I get 204 no content. Now if I do a get on profiles, again, admin is remains, but the updated record is now deleted with ID3, that's gone now. So that's a, a quick look at another resource, just so that you get comfortable with the idea of these different types of uh, instance resource URLs. One, you have the ID, Second, you have something like a name, which is a custom uh, resource URL instance. So with this, we have two resources in place. We're gonna talk about the comment uh, resource URL much later, but for now, these two are pretty much working for the standard CRUD operations. In the next tutorial, we're gonna take on a couple of advanced features like filtering and pagination. So see you then, and thanks for watching.